Tanvi is in the waiting room. Just add her. Tanvi Lal. Yeah, yeah. Arrange the waiting room. Just add her. Arrange the
toot me with your words you may cut me with your eyes you may kill me with your hatefulness but still like air i'll rise to celebrate the spirit of courage resilience and determination skills fair in association with aspire for her and lotus valley national school is so happy to welcome you all today inspired by maya angelo's poem still i rise our talk series aims at interviewing eminent women from different walks of life who have made it big despite the many challenges that they have faced on their way and in today's session we have someone who personifies resilience as a professional badminton player she has been a member of the indian team since 2012 she reached her career high world ranking number 50 in 2017 and was also a member of the bronze medal winning indian team that created history at the asian games 2016 and uber cup 2014 and 2016 always among the top of her class even academically she pursued her masters in sports management from lafbara university and her bachelors in economics and business from mumbai university Beyond this she is a level 2 fitness instructor passionate podcaster as well students please help me in warmly welcoming our guest of honor miss tanvi lad hello how are you doing today it's so wonderful to see you hey thank you so much it's really wonderful to see uh, so many kids um, yeah and i'm looking forward to an interactive session with them hope to uh, inspire them in some way or the other so yeah let's get on with it tanvi uh, i can tell you that there are a lot of questions that are going to be coming in uh, your <laughs> way so it's going to be a fun session for sure and uh, i must tell everyone at this point we have 200 students in in this session and a lot more watching us on youtube live so okay. uh, students just an announcement for all of you in case you have any questions please make sure that you are putting it in the pigeon hole link all right on the pigeon hole link the link is provided in the chat box it's going to be provided right now uh it's also going to be provided to all our youtube audiences who are watching us um and to make sure that this is a fair system the questions that are most upvoted are the ones that are going to be asked all right so students make sure that you're asking as many questions as possible and we are learning as much as possible i did are you excited i need to see some thumbs up going up come on quickly Awesome that's awesome so with this tanvi i think we're all set to ask you your first question yeah. are we ready yeah absolutely yes? awesome well tanvi uh, you are a pro professional badminton player uh, you have uh, been a member of the indian team since 2012 you reached your career high world ranking of number 50 in 2017 and you created history at the asian you were part of creating history at the asian games in 2016 and the uber cup in 2014 and 2016 what was it like being in such prestigious competitions and representing india making us all so proud well uh, you know before um, i get to the whole achievement and creating history you know something that i wanted to share with the kids is that uh, you know all this you know the glamorous side of sport and achievement that you know very often we see in the media we see uh fame we see uh the endorsements we see uh you know sports persons becoming like uh celebrities and you know it all seems very glamorous um and of course you know when you are, when you're part of uh you know a historic moment in um, in sport it's a very proud feeling as an athlete but when you think back to you know how your journey started it's a very step by step kind of process and when you're starting off it's uh, you don't know how things are going to actually pan out mm -hmm. so um, you know it's very important to um, you know find a passion or something that you're good at and then uh, put in 110% in terms of focusing on the effort and the process because um, you don't know where that effort every day you know the effort that you put in you don't know where uh and how that's going to manifest 5 years from today or 10 years from today um so you know effort never goes to waste um 
whatever it is whichever uh, line it may be whichever uh, you know field it may be it's very important to put your head down and actually uh, focus on the process focus on you know working hard uh, putting in those uh, hours of work and and learning along the way there's so much to learn uh, you will fail more often than you will succeed uh you will have you know few wins you will have few uh, events that you do well at and majority of the time you will fail but you have to come back to the drawing board put your head down and you know start working again um if you have that kind of a mentality and an approach to everything that you do and aspire to do in life uh then uh, you never know where that effort can manifest and how uh, you know you you may shape up and um you know success will come to you in some form or the other uh, that's just the way the world works that's just the way the universe works your effort will be repaid but you can't start off um thinking about the rewards and the recognition and creating history it's a very step by step climb it's a very step by step process uh, as a sports person um you know a, as a 10 year old my goals were winning and becoming the best in bombay to start with uh at a very like inter school level or inter district level then i uh, started competing for maharashtra at the maharashtra state level so i was playing against uh, girls you know within uh, maharashtra state i had to travel within uh, maharashtra state to smaller towns smaller cities and actually compete and prove myself within the state once i achieved that goal um i entered national level tournaments my first all india tournament i didn't even clear the qualifying rounds i lost in the first round of um under 16 uh, qualification rounds i didn't even make it to the main draw uh and i remember i came back very very dejected and um had to start working uh you know on a whole new aspect of my game my coach was pushing me hard in training and then um you know one year one and a half years down the line i won my first national level title then i got selected to represent india then i the next step was playing for the indian senior team and then we went on to create history so it took a good 10 years 12 years in the field to actually uh, be part of that historic moment absolutely and i think you spoke like at this point you know you spoke about Uh, following a very process oriented approach which we will talk about a little more in detail just in a few minutes and you spoke about how you just took it one step step at a time and i think that is very important that you know while we have the larger picture in mind while we know that you know this is probably where i want to head it's very important to break it down in in much smaller ways achieving those smaller smaller goals to you know in achieving and creating history so uh that's great that you know um, of your goals and we'll talk about this but you know uh while just talking about uh, starting sports at a young age you started at um, seven years old right uh, you were seven and yeah. you started playing at that point um as you said you didn't really know uh you know you didn't know about history obviously this is something much recent yeah. but how was your journey how has it been uh you know when you started out at seven what was it like when you had to manage and uh, well you also had your classes to go for well i think uh, like i mentioned you know at at that age there's a lot on your plate you know being a kid at you know your you have school 6 7 hours of school to attend you have uh, pressure from school uh, you know whatever your workload at at school is so there is an academic pressure uh, there is also uh, you know if you're pursuing sport usually really you have a physical training session which is early morning so you end up doing that going going to school um then finishing school going to the courts and actually doing your on court practice uh and then you come home you know quite tired at the end of the day you have some homework to do so your life becomes quite uh, regimented uh you have to be extremely disciplined uh with your time with your food with your rest with with everything so i think discipline gets inculcated into you at a very early age and you have to uh you know grow up quite early on if you want to um you know do well and i think 
uh, at that age uh, as kids um, you know it's a achievement kind of motivates you uh, it's a it's a kind of high it's a kind of motivation which um, keeps you going so if you if uh, you know if you find yourself actually winning uh, you know at a at a state level or at a at a district level it's a very motivating feeling to um, you know be doing that be, be actually living that lifestyle putting in that work you don't mind making those sacrifices mm-hmm. so i think in my case it was similar i mean it was a lot of in time uh, that was invested um you had to have your family support the whole lifestyle because everyone in the family has to live and eat and sleep the way you do so it all starts at a very uh, very you know uh, city level um and as you keep proving yourself you move up the ranks you move up the ladders you compete in tougher tournaments tougher grades of tournaments um and of course the challenges just keep compounding because there are physical goals to achieve the amount of time you're spending on court your um you know you're also traveling for tournaments so you're missing a fair amount of school you have to come back uh make sure that you know everything is on point so it's a very disciplined regimented existence that you get used to Yeah. um but then that's a choice if that's giving you happiness um then by all means and i think um, nothing you know there's 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 so much that sport teaches you at an early age um you i think life skills are uh, one of the first i mean it's it's something that you just you learn on the job uh, managing your time um managing um uh, you know even your emotions um is something that you learn very early on yeah. and so i would really urge all the kids out there to pick up a sport i mean you don't have to really um get super competitive but just picking up the sport getting active uh you know uh, learning the skills um you you will get competitive at some point you will have people who you compete against so uh you learn a lot you learn um, leadership skills you learn teamwork you learn uh time management and all this just is invaluable uh, you know in whatever you aspire to do later on you know tanvi uh, you mentioned quite a few things which is so important and i want to go step by step at this point as you can see we have a very young audience at this point who yeah. uh, often thinks that you know discipline and the word discipline they you know they want to run away from it and yeah. if i was to put myself in that position i think i was the same where i often thought that you know discipline is all about waking up on time and yeah. sleeping on time and it's doing things a certain way and i can see a few laughs over here because i think people do relate to it but what actually we often forget to realize is that there's a lot of merit attached to it there's a reason why we do certain things and the reason yeah. of it can the reason why we achieve so much is also because uh when we live a, a disciplined life we're able to achieve so much so can you talk yeah. about what your day was like in school and how you were able to manage uh you know your time i don't want to scare the kids any further <laughs> by giving them care. a run. i think i'm sure they're going to be very inspired uh how much potential they too have they too possess yeah. and how they yeah. can make such good use of their time if they're just a little bit more disciplined i mean i would want to probably put out a question to all of them uh, as to would they be willing to um, you know say say the hour that you spend uh, watching tv say when you come back from school if you would want to would you be um, would you consider learning a sport or learning a skill and actually uh, maybe getting to play a few uh, you know tournaments uh, getting fitter getting um, getting to actually compete and maybe winning you know the with the prospect of winning a medal or winning a title uh, is that something that excites you is that something that uh, you feel um, you know enthused to do if the answer is yes then you know that should get you thinking i'm spending one hour at the end of my my day sitting uh, you know on on the couch and watching uh, a tv sh- tv show or watching uh, you know a cartoon i can actually uh, spend that time actually learning something new and uh, maybe uh, i may you know if i if i have the uh, aptitude for it i may just 
get get good at the sport or at the skill and you never know where it may take me Absolutely. so i mean uh, that is the question that uh, it's it's a little deep for for a kid to to think to think about but to start with uh, if you are someone who is aspirational and like you know wants to do well um, then it's that's the starting point because it all starts with uh, a drive or a passion intrinsically within you within you you should be you should have some fire yeah. um, that is the starting point if that's there then you know waking up at 4 4:30 in the morning going to the court doing your drills going to school doing your academics you know it just flows because that passion keeps you going you're motivated from within you don't need mom to wake you up in the morning and say uh, have have your pre workout meal go for your training session uh, sleep on time at night stop uh, you know watching tv till late you will not need anybody to monitor you i mean if i tell you what my day looked like um it was very it was very regimented uh, there was very little time for me to you know spend time with friends or uh, maybe i would eat uh, my favorite dessert once a month or once in two months but i didn't look at it as a sacrifice because i was so motivated you know with um, achieving oh i want to win this title the moment i had won that title it was you know that had certain players who i didn't like playing against so i had that on my agenda i have to you know um get past these opponents so it was just you know like a motivating uh, one thing led to the other and um i'm so happy that uh, till today that something that you know i make sure that i i nurture that that fire within me that's something that shouldn't die down ever um so i would urge all of you to uh just think within yourself you know just look inside ask yourself what is that one thing that that motivates me and um whatever it may be uh i think that's the first step absolutely and i think uh, you know the fire in the belly that you spoke about yeah. uh, yeah. i must tell you our students there are a few college students also who've joined us and i'm sure they also relate to it even you know uh, it's very difficult at any stage to you know kind of change to pivot and uh, transition your life into a more disciplined life but i think you need to start somewhere so it's it's great that you know you've had uh, these experiences and that you're sharing this with us um point i also want to bring to light that you've always been a very academically brilliant student you ranked third in school uh, you also at the top of your class i'm sure the decision to pursue badminton uh, you know full time uh, over something like at that point was a difficult choice for you uh what role did your family play in making this decision and how did you you know have uh how did you make the decision at the end of it so um you know it was something that i faced throughout my schooling years uh you know i um thankfully had a very very supportive um you know set of teachers and principal who understood that i was trying to excel in two disciplines so um there there was always the the invariably exams would clash with tournaments and i would prioritize the tournaments but i had the backing of my teachers to say okay you go play the match play the tournament come back and we'll schedule a re exam or a supplementary exam uh, later on so um but having said that there were you know times when um you know during exam times terminal exams at that point uh when um say i had to you know put my, my badminton training a little bit on the back foot um instead of training twice i would train once or during exams i probably had to miss a couple of sessions and just do my own physical training so that is a uh, you know a balancing act especially when you're in school that you kind of have to keep managing um once i got to the 10th it was um i had to take a couple months off i think i took about 3 months off uh, active competing and focused entirely on the icse exam uh, but but post that you know it was um, that was exactly when i was selected as part of the national senior national team so it was a very big personal achievement at the age of 15 i had just been selected into the national team 
uh, and you know next month the following month i got my icsc results and i ranked third in school so it was a big life decision discussion after discussion at home uh, in terms of should i pursue uh, you know go the academic route or should i actually uh, take the plunge because i would have to move away from my family i'm you know from bombay i would have to move shift base to hyderabad and live at the national center which is like military camp you're at the national center then it's 8 10 hours of just training and competing and uh, it's a different life altogether so it was a very big decision um but uh, and i did take the plunge i did take the risk because um uh, that just seemed like the logical thing to do and uh, i did realize that i can be uh you know an athlete only till the age of 30 31 um academics is something maybe i can come back to um it was with that thought process that i actually decided to pursue sport uh full time uh my uh, 11 12th and even up to graduation i managed via online studying um keeping in touch with my teachers online so it was a balancing act even then but um i'm happy that i uh you know no regrets now when i look back i sh- i shouldn't feel that you know i had the opportunity of doing something playing for the country and i let it just go um but yeah i mean um once i finished uh, graduation i was a full time uh, athlete for almost two and a half years um but then felt the need to do a masters come back to education um so yeah i think once you know that that bug in you just just keeps surfacing from time to time um but i think yeah. it's, it's always think, a balance yeah. yeah i think what's important for our students to kind of follow through here is that uh, you you did what your heart you know was telling you to do and this is something why is it important to our students is because like they will also be making a lot of Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially you know eighth ninth tenth where they have to select certain uh, streams when you are in college uh, you need to select you know what's next for you and it's very important to kind of weigh obviously the balance you know you you weigh it you weigh it correctly but at the end of it do take the risk lead to something beautiful yeah, yeah. and what is amazing here is that you took a calculated decision yeah you did not stop studying you always had that you know going for you but you just you know kind of focused on something else at this point understanding that you can always pursue studies later on too uh for students who want to probably get into something different something else it's very important again to understand the pros and cons weigh it and make balanced decisions make educated decisions at the end of it isn't it absolutely i think so the way it works today is that you know we have opportunities that probably you know earlier it was the stereotypical three different streams you either pursue science commerce like it was very very stereotyped now the kind of opportunities that are available even to the younger lot the kind of streams that are you know open you know there is there's so much that you can do there is uh, and it's appreciated talent and uh, things you know offbeat things that you pursue are actually appreciated and there is a market for it so i would urge everyone to actually think out of the box you know fall mm-hmm. find something that you're good at and make sure that you're developing it if you're really good and you know you want to pursue it you know whole hog absolutely um, make sure that it's like you mentioned make sure that it's a calculated decision and um, education is of course the basis i would not want you to neglect it uh so keep it going you know even if it, there's a bit of a compromise keep it going it's something that you should be able to fall back on uh, yeah. at a later point in life because that's that's going to be your plan b at all times yeah and i think it's very important to always have a plan b especially so in a field uh, in a career in sports because you know sports often comes with a caveat right like pursuing sports Absolutely. there's always uh, there you know there's a lot of things that are a part of that decision but one of them is also that there's an early retirement associated with it as you mentioned yourself yeah. 30 31 is where you know most people are looking what next plan b right. so it's very important again to have a plan b of sorts do what your heart is saying but always you know know what happens if it doesn't work out and i think you did that so beautifully uh currently you have your own podcast would you like to talk about that you know how you've been uh, working on it 
absolutely so i think again it started off as a hobby uh, it started off as something um, you know that i was doing during the first lockdown um, badminton training had come to a standstill and um, it, you know i just happened to ask a teammate of mine would you want to uh, do something on the lines of a chat show or a talk show with uh, with all our teammates we can maybe chat with them and make a fun show out of it you know literally that was the thought process in mind so we started off recording these interviews over zoom we um, got in touch with uh, athletes from different sports um, be it tennis be it squash be it cricket we spoke to um, a whole spectrum of athletes on everything sport everything nutrition everything uh, training um, and uh, um, you know that's basically how it started uh, everything to do with um, you know their journey it became like an athlete to athlete kind of conversation um, and the athletes also were uh, were communicating really well because they were at home they didn't have any travel and training and uh, tournaments to you know um, keep in mind so uh, everyone was uh, was talking there you know straight from the heart and uh, you know the show just picked up well uh, we got um, you know a good amount of uh, feedback uh, and um, that's when we actually decided to uh, you know maybe streamline it a little more we were taken over by a podcasting company um, yeah and uh, so the the show is titled the millennial athlete and uh, it's everything to do with being an athlete in this millennial world uh, so we have kind of uh, you know kept that trend of talking to athletes but it's also uh, we 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 now cover nutritionists we cover you know a little bit of sports policy everything sports basically everything sport everything to do with the uh, sporting system and the sporting ecosystem mm -hmm. in the country the kind of uh, changes we want to see coming in um, right, because right. my my co-host and i have lived at the national center we've seen uh, you know the pros and cons of living there and how sport in general functions in in a country like india and there's so much that we feel um, you know is wrong about the system or there's a lot of professionalism that can come in so that's basically what the show is about uh, but yeah we cover like at present there's so much sporting drama uh, going on there's the wimbledon the euros um so live updates um our take on who we feel is the you know the likely winner we we cover all all sporting events um and everything to do with with sport that's amazing and that's brilliant i think uh, we'll be putting a link to it also if you know okay. yeah. uh, so our students can watch it stay in touch in at least some way even post this interview um i'd like to go back to the first question actually that i'd asked you know uh, we know the process and we know the hard work that's gone behind all of this but now that you look back in retrospect you know you have achieved so much and you are where you are because of all the work that you have done how does it you know like how does it feel to have done this how does it feel how does it keep you motivated to do better so i think um when you look back it's obviously a very satisfying feeling because uh you know like i mentioned at the start you know when you start off um it's just you're consumed by the goals you have to achieve and uh you know your whole regimen and you know you're you're just like a robo uh you know going through the grind and that grind is driving you so you're just you know in on a roll um but now and especially i think the pandemic has forced all of us to slow down a little bit um cut cut short that rat race and um of course having spent 15 years doing this uh, now when i look back and slow down a little bit um it's a very satisfying feeling because um, you know you there is there is a, you know i definitely value goal setting and being aspirational and ambitious but at the same time it's important to from time to time take stock of what you've achieved and give yourself a pat on the back yeah. Yeah. um that is important you know celebrating uh, a victory or an achievement is important uh but uh, so so you know from time to time do celebrate do 
pat yourself on the back and then get back come back to the drawing board and get back to work the next day that should be more or less the mantra but uh, yeah i mean having said that 15 years um now going ahead uh it's it's um it takes a little bit of soul searching to find uh what you want to do next whether you want to give back to the sport that has given you so much or you want to build on the experience that you've gained and you know give back to um, the younger lot or you know build on that whatever you built you you achieved so far do you how, how do you want to grow further um that's that takes a little bit of soul searching um and i think i'm in that in the process of doing that but and what I'm sure that's a new challenge altogether it's a lovely absolutely. challenge because you are going back to the drawing board you're reimagining imagining recreating a lot of things for yourself yeah. Yeah. and but you're coming from a different space like there's yeah. no factory is now it's more from a uh, from the perspective of you giving back yeah so it's a very different mind space uh, right now definitely and uh, you know that gives that brings me to the uh, the last question and i'd like to be open it up to the students because i've been getting quite a few questions uh, personal chat too and we'll be opening it to them but before that i just have one question you know uh, a sports person is always remembered for the spirit uh, you know associated a spirit that he embodies of resilience of uh, taking even setbacks in stride yeah it according to you that one can learn from a sports person and how can we embody and bring that into our life um so i think i would i mean i i i i would probably be guilty of dra- dragging rafa nadal into all my uh, talk all all my chat shows even on the podcast i think he is an integral part of um, most of my shows but uh, i i want to ask all the kids out here how many of you are actually uh, nadal fans do you all watch tennis do you all follow rafa i'm i'm a roger federer fan so <laughs> i'm just not going to pass that but i'm deeply inspired by everything that he does so yes um, so i think the one thing that comes to mind when you um, when you see rafa on court or even in training or if you follow him on social media is his passion his grit his never say die attitude and if you just you know every time you're down or um every time you're you know even working towards something if you just uh, like i have this mental image of rafa um that i keep visiting from time to time because it reminds me um it reminds me to stay resilient you know uh things are not going to be easy but uh you know his his mentality of going through the grind no matter he is he is he's proven that he is the best in the field of tennis but uh or at least on clay he is undisputed he is the undisputed king but he doesn't take any any opponent lightly it may be a first round opponent but he still comes to the court with Uh, the same gusto with the same uh, enthusiasm with the same emotion he does his warm up the same way whether he's playing roger federer or whether he's playing a world number 100 his intensity his uh, the intent with which he comes to the court is something that i think um, we can all learn from um, in whatever you aspire to do uh, you know in your life if you the, the commitment the drive the grit that you bring bring to the table every day is something we can all learn from so uh, uh i mean that's that's my my take away from from him as an athlete and uh, uh i think it's it's something that i like to live my life by because uh, more often than not you're going to be down times are going to be tough post the pandemic um but just bringing that uh, never say die attitude and that resilience to the table every day is uh, something that's going to stand you in good stead absolutely and you know uh, you mentioned about being strong being resilient and the never say die attitude right and i think you embody it in many ways and that's what we have learned from you and i'm sure our questions are, you know the students are going to ask you a lot of questions around it too um, but uh, just there's so much that one can learn from a sports person especially someone who who's who's uh, practically devoted their life to it and uh, thank you so much once again you know for talking about it making us appreciate all that you do all that everyone in this field does to ensure that they are making our country proud making 
uh, you know, history, creating history with everything that they're doing with every shot, every, uh, you know, every practice round that they are devoting their lives to. So thanks, Tanvi, for that. At this point, uh, I'm going to open it up to our students. Uh, Anansh, if you could please help me out with the questions. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Absolutely. Just give me one moment, please. Tanvi, glad to be listening to a bunch of things that you're saying, a lot of inspirational things for all our students. And I'm sure uh, you've also opened a can of worms when you've brought up the Nadal versus Federer versus Djokovic <laughs> debate. But one thing that everybody can sit and agree with you on is the fact that, yes, at the end of the day, each one of them is extremely resilient and a lot of great points and your story is just so inspirational. And I hope a lot of these sports people sitting here do seek inspiration and hopefully decide to take up certain things professionally. Uh, that said, um, I'm here as Ashi's assistant. We have 84 questions and unfortunately, it's not going to be possible to ask 84 questions, but we'll ask the questions that are most upvoted. And the most upvoted question is by the student who goes by the name of Ankita Kumari. So Ankita, I'm going to give you an opportunity to unmute yourself. If you can unmute yourself, please go ahead and do so. I will allow you to ask the question live. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I am also a state level judo athlete. And uh, so uh, as an athlete, I wanted to ask you two questions. And the first question is, um, yeah, as you mentioned, there are a lot of things that we have to um, give up and be disciplined, that we have to stay committed to our goals. Uh, so what is what was the hardest thing that you had to give up uh, for badminton? And um, the second question is uh, a question slash advice, uh, which is something that I've struggled a lot with uh, as um, when I was a beginner. And even now, sometimes is that when I go for competitions, I often get intimidated by my opponent's reputation because um, the other people have been playing for a much longer time. They've been practicing for a, a much longer time than I have. So um, can you give any advice to overcome that? Absolutely. First of all, congratulations on pursuing judo, a fantastic sport for um, a young girl to be pursuing. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, there is um, there's nothing really that I consider a, you know, a sacrifice. Uh, it was a conscious decision on my part to pursue the sport. And I, I loved everything that came with it, whether it was waking up at 4.30 in the morning every day, uh, following a particular diet, uh, not eating certain foods, eating certain foods, um, being regimented with, uh, you know, my workouts, with uh, school work, um, you know, everything that came with it uh, was a very conscious decision. Um, you know, I was often asked by family, uh, family members, uh, you're never there for birthdays, you're, uh, you're never there for celebrations and uh, weddings, because I really couldn't make it very often for a lot of the social events. Uh, but it was a very clear decision. I didn't feel like I'm missing out or not getting to spend time with friends that there's always a time, like I mentioned, as a sportsman, you're going to do that for X number of years. So it is you know, a lifestyle that you choose and it's if it's giving you happiness, if it's uh, making you happy and you consider it worth it, then it's not a sacrifice at all. I mean, once you're done with your professional career, you have your whole life to, um, you know, prioritize other things and maybe make up for uh, the things that you couldn't do. So uh, on that front, I hope I've answered that question. And um, in terms of your uh, your opposition, so um, you know, in in it, we have these uh, mental perceptions of uh, an X player is ranked so and so. X player has uh, you know when 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 the draw is released, it's it's but normal for us to go and check up his ranking, to check up uh, videos of um, his previous matches, to see his track record, his head to head record against certain opponents. Oh, he's beaten so and so. Uh, so he must be he must be good. Um, I would refrain from doing that. There was a time when I even uh, wouldn't look at the draw till a day before. I would just check my match timing. I'm playing X player. Prepare for that because it's a fresh day. I mean, the match is starting at love all. Um, and it all boils down to, you know, the preparation you've done. Um, it's you against the opponent on that day. Uh, he may be the greatest player, um, you know, around, 
but if you've uh, applied your mind tactically to tackling him uh, and you actually put your 100% out there um anything can happen that's the beauty of sport uh it's starting at love all and um, anything can happen the unpredictable nature of sport is what uh the thrill thrill lies in that so i would urge you to um you know these are these are all mental cobwebs uh rankings track records uh you must respect every opponent irrespective of his past irrespective of what he's achieved uh never it goes the other way too so you know he may be a low ranked player that doesn't mean that you don't warm up and you just go on to the court thinking that i'm going to win this hands down because you never know on that day he may play out of his skin he may play the best match of his uh life so far and may just um you know come out a winner may surprise you that's how top seeds uh lose in the first round of many events uh and these unseeded underdogs you know come away beating a top seed in the first round that's when they're most vulnerable so um yeah thanks thanks for that tanvi i think uh, that was a wonderful question ankita and very to uh, to all of us in some ways that you know even while we don't play a sport necessarily we are intimidated by a lot of things on a daily basis and i think that attitude of just focusing on you know your game and your uh, you know uh, preparation behind a lot of these things instead of focusing on what the other person has done i think is always the smartest way to go because uh, you have control over yourself you don't have control over what the other person is going to do so thanks tanvi for talking about that uh, anansh can we um, go to the next okay. question uh, we have a question that has gotten uploaded 30 times now even higher than ankita's question it's a question by arav arav i'm going to try and uh, give you an opportunity to uh, unmute yourself there are three aravs i'm not sure which arav it is so i'm going to allow all of you to unmute yourselves it's a question related to e sports whichever one of you three uh, ask that question please go ahead and if you are unable to unmute yourselves then uh, i'll allow i'll ask the question on your behalf yes go ahead arav garg is it arav mehra all right there's a little bit of confusion here there are three arav so i'm just going to ask the question on their behalf uh, the question is what are your thoughts on e sports um that's something that's picked up in the recent couple years um but i mean as a sportsman who's actually played active sport um i don't really have a take on it because um it's a new age thing and i haven't played much of uh, um much of you know anything uh, virtually or but it's um what, what exactly is the question aimed at what what perspective do you want so i think i think i think tanvi what uh, the students are trying to ask is you know e sports are getting much bigger now yeah, yeah. Um, they are going to be a part of the asian games moving forward in yeah. certain formats as well so the students want to know whether you know pursuing a career probably in the field of e sports is a realistic possibility at this point in time uh, and i'd also like to add to that uh, question i'm sure a lot of people are slightly unaware of what e sports typically are so could you also highlight a little bit about that yes please tanvi so um i mean like like i said e sports haven't they don't have much of a history in a country like india and uh, though they've been included in you know the, the asian games coming up and uh, i'm sure it's you know popularity wise it's already up there and it's just going to get bigger being included in an in an official event like the asian games but having said that uh, looking at it as a career prospect at this point of view when it's not established wouldn't be the wisest thing um yes if you're if you're good at it give it a shot um you know but but making a career out of it right now wouldn't be the wisest because there is no uh, it's not yet an established sport it's not yet uh, there there are no uh, you know pathways for uh, kids from the grassroots to actually build up and make a career out of it it's uh, it is developing and i'm sure in the next 10 years it's probably going to be up there and uh, you could probably look at even making a career out of it because definitely the sponsors and the money is coming in um but at present uh, it's some it's a it's again a calculated decision that one would have to make thanks 
Uh, thanks. I think the question was by Arav Mehra, who was unable to unmute himself. But thank you. That's a very interesting question. Neat question. Uh, well, opportunities keep arising in the field of sports, as Tanvi is mentioning, but we have to be very realistic. Uh, we have a question that uh, has been asked by Krishnika Raman, which has been uploaded by 13 times. Let me see if I can unmute Krishnika. Yes. Krishnika, go ahead. Uh, the floor is all yours. Please go ahead and unmute. You can switch your video on. I'll spotlight you too. Yes. Uh, yeah, ma'am. So, good afternoon, ma'am. And uh, I, f uh, I would like to first of all congratulate you for your achievements. And uh, so, my question to you is, why did you only choose badminton as your sport and what at actually attracted you towards it? And who inspired you the most to pursue this sport? Um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, if I just uh, flash back to, uh, you know, I was five or six um, and uh, I literally had picked up every sport there was to pick up uh, because I uh, in my in the words of my mother uh, a bundle of uh, extra energy and it needed to be channelized so um, every every possible sport be it swimming be it uh, tennis be it uh, any any running event in school um, I wanted to participate. I wanted to be part of it. And I had that competitive drive, uh, which my parents noticed early on. Um, so I think I tried my hand at most sports uh, to start with. Um, and I would urge all you young kids to do the same. Don't specialize in a sport till, uh, you know, till you're 12 or 13 or even maybe 14, 15, because um, you know, at that at that young age, especially 10, 11, um, you're developing a lot of skills. You're developing a lot of um, hand-eye coordination. You're, you're not really sure what you're good at. So it's important to experiment. It's important to try your hand at different sports. And finally, uh, you know, you also develop physically, develop uh, the competitive um, side of things, the, the competitive nature that you need to actually play sport, develop all those things, develop teamwork. Um, and then wh when you, when you're actually sure is when uh, you can actually, you know, go ahead and specialize uh, in the sport of your choice. And that, that's something, something like that happened in my case as well. I tried my hand at most sports and um, though I did take uh, you know, I was uh, leaning towards picking up badminton by the age of uh, seven, eight, eight, nine, maybe. I was pretty sure that, you know, this is the way I want to go. Uh, my mom played a little bit of badminton, uh, so I would spend time watching her on court and ended up picking up the racket, trying my hand, and then one thing led to another. So um, I think by the age of 13, I played my first tournament. And from then on, it's just been one thing leading to the next. That's wonderful, Tanvi. And I think uh, what's great here is that your parents were so supportive of, uh, you know, just the entire decision to try out different things. And I'm sure most parents are even today, like, you know, with our students, sometimes we as kids might resist a lot of things that they want us to do, yeah. not realizing the merit, but it's very important to also understand where they are coming from. Yeah. That's great that you were able to pursue all these sports and then again made an educated decision as to what you wanted to pursue. Yes, Anand, back to you. All right, let's quickly move on to the next question. I think we have time for a couple more questions. A uh, couple of questions are quite similar, so I'm going to give those a miss. Very important question asked by Anusha, uh, Anushka Agrawal. Anushka, just one moment, please. Uh, not able to find Anushka, actually, unfortunately, on the... Um, Zoom section, but she's asked a very interesting question. She's asked, did you ever feel like giving up? Multiple times. So to be honest, the fear of failure and um, being disheartened every time you have a loss, it's a very normal feeling. Um, you know, uh, you, you put in so much of um, effort and it's not just you, it's your entire team, your entire family, uh, there's a lot that goes into preparing for an event or actually living the life of a sports person. So uh, when you don't achieve what you've set your heart on or you have a bad day and you lose in the first round um, or you put in so much of money and investment and you've traveled to a country abroad and you lose in the first round, 
um you 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 kind of feel that you've let yourself down uh you've let your family down it's very normal for a sports person to um to go through all these emotions uh so you know um and as you grow older the fear of uh you know time running out or um you know am i am i wasting my sponsors money uh, there are there are a lot of things that play on an athlete's mind and uh, an athlete's mind can can actually be your be your worst enemy if, if it's not managed well so uh, beyond the point you know everyone learns the skills by the age of 15 16 i think skill wise you're pretty much up there uh and it's all about managing yourself mentally because um being in the right frame of mind the right state of mind every time you get on to court is um, and even off court i think it's very important to manage uh what you read um who you read about who you interact with um and just your daily thought process your self talk if that regulated um i think an athlete can really spiral down a very uh dark route so um you know the thought of giving up the thought of um, the fear of failure uh, does does come up very often and um, it it all boils down to um you know how you manage those thoughts uh reasoning with yourself self talk uh, you 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 may want to consult a sports psychologist you may want to uh, have you know a confidant or a mentor who you can confide in and who gives you a perspective from time to time um you know or it has to be something um totally you know off beat like i know a couple of my teammates who uh, who paint a lot so they use uh, art therapy or they use journaling as a means of dealing with um their internal stresses and whatever's going on mentally or you know within them and now mental health has become such a you know spoke it's become a hashtag so athletes uh, initially we would it would be looked upon as oh um i don't feel like training um you know there's a lot going on mentally i'm be disturbed i'm not coming for training and the coach would uh, you know take offense the coach would say oh you've become lazy or you are not committed to your sport but now it's you know it's it's pretty uh, the the channel of communication is such that you can walk up to a coach and say you know such and such a thing is going on personally or mentally i'm having a tough time and i want some time off to rework myself mentally and it's an accepted thing i mean coaches uh, give you that time off it's respected so um so yeah to answer your question the fear of failure is comes under that mental health hashtag and um the fear the, the the it's it's very easy to throw in the towel and say oh i give up um this is not my cup of tea i want to move on to doing something else but uh everything that you do in life has uh you know things are going to come up you are going to question your ability from time to time uh so throwing in the towel and giving up is the is the easy way out but actually reasoning and find solution um you know looking at a problem with uh with a bent of mind that i want to for- find a solution and work my way through this uh brings us back to being resilient and uh you know finding a way um you know i wanted to draw an an analogy here to um you know sometimes you're playing these very tough three set of matches and it's 17 all 18 all and it can go either way there's no real uh, winner or loser in that match and it's a high pressure uh, kind of um, situation and it's actually uh, you know the person who manages to keep his mind uh, under control and doesn't let his emotions get the better of him at that point is the one who wins i don't think there's skill wise he's been superior but it's um, the person who who is not choked under pressure at that 17 all 18 all you're going to actually think clearly you're going to focus on what needs to be done and you're going to execute it so that needs a very calm collected and composed mind in those high pressure situations um it's very so could you that. share could you share some personal experience tanvi some game um yeah i think um so this was during the sayed modi uh, in 2015 um there was a sayed modi international in lucknow and um it was just 6 months before the uh, rio olympics 
and I was to play Carolina Marin, uh, the world number one, and she had won every title that there was in the book. And um, uh, I was to play her in the first round. So obviously there was a lot of build up uh, mentally within me. There was um, you know a lot of build up. Um, having you know she has this whole reputation. She's fast. She's aggressive. Um, so not the best of opponents to have. Um, but having said that, so uh, I, I I had the whole you know Lucknow crowd uh, kind of egging me on and um, happened to uh, win the first game against her and uh, you know it was a high pressure 22 20 or 23 21 uh, the first game and the second game I was actually leading 19 14 and you know the thoughts coming to me were like I couldn't believe that I'm on the verge of beating a world number one. Um, Literally, you know, thoughts of self-doubt come to you at that point. And it's such a high-pressure situation. Um, but um, that you stop thinking clearly. You stop thinking, you stop doing the right thing. So at that point, I had been following a particular strategy that had worked, obviously, through the match. Um, and I had been so focused on the process. There was no... Um, you know, thoughts about playing Carolina had disappeared. I was in the zone and completely focused on doing the right thing at the right time, um, you know, as if it was any other opponent um, on the opposite side of the net. But at that point, at 19-14 in the second game, when I had just two points to win to actually beat her, um, my mind started thinking of everything that it shouldn't have been thinking about. So I was thinking about uh, a world number one. I was thinking about making headlines in tomorrow's newspaper. I was thinking about uh, my ranking that would probably jump, um, you know, skyrocket um, by virtue of the number of points that I would get by beating her. Everything that I shouldn't have been thinking of. And I actually choked. I started doing the wrong thing. Um, and I lost from there. She scored six points in a row. I lost the game 21-19. Uh, and the third game, she steamrolled me. So, a perfect example of a match that I should have won, which didn't go my way. I think uh, so many lessons, just in one question. Uh, you started off by talking about you know, how you faced uh, the fear of failure. Uh, you've, uh, you know, had to learn how to deal with it. And, you know, you, you spoke about, you know, how to manage your mind and you give us this. Uh, in, uh, from our conversation the last time, you had mentioned that, you know, uh, whenever you found yourself in a situation like this, uh, you've got your own mechanisms, you know, you know how to get out of it. Uh, could you also share that with our students? You know, you spoke about running as one way out. Uh, something that you've personally done that's helped you to come out of a situation like this? Absolutely. What was the next day like? For after that, uh, after that incident, how did you deal with it, and how did you come out of it? In fact, it took a while to come out um, of that space because uh, I could have created history, and she went on to win the Olympic gold, you know, in less than six months. So it took me a while, in fact, to deal with it. Um, I did end up, I, I was working with a sports psychologist at that point. So, you know, regular conversations with him kind of helped me put things into perspective. Um, you know, very often we're reminded as athletes that uh, you are not equal to the results that you achieve. You, uh, you know, okay, you had a bad day at office. You treat it at, as a bad day at office without beating yourself up and taking it too personally. Um and you move on, but that's easier said than done. It takes, uh, it leaves an imprint on your mind um, and it comes back to you when you're playing another tough opponent and it's, you know, going close or you're having a hard time or you're in a high pressure situation. These thoughts do come to you. Uh, and so, yeah, it's something that you have to learn to throw out of your system. And there are a lot of athletes who are good at it. Uh, they... You know, they have a bad day. They're very good at snapping out. So either they use retail therapy or they um, they go and shop for something. Or they just, you know, they're very good at um, dealing with losses um, and, you know, throwing those emotions out of it. And that's 
that's good in sport you the more the less you internalize uh, all these uh, heavy emotions um the better it is uh, mentally because you stop thinking and you don't let it get really deep but i wasn't an athlete like that i was someone who would overthink and overanalyze so i would take time to deal with um a loss or something that you know um hadn't gone my way but i found that running was something that um kept me going so um post this whole carolina marin incident i remember that i did probably play badminton as such for at least two weeks two and a half weeks i came back to the national center of course because you have to get back to um the 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 camp um and i spent the next two and a half three weeks just uh working um physically on my physical conditioning so i would just run um a lot i would go to the track or go outdoors and um, obviously spoke to my coach about it and he was okay i didn't have any tournaments really coming up so uh, we got on to a very like physical kind of uh, plan where um more than i think working on it physically it was a kind of mental release um just you know putting in those miles putting in those kilometers um it it's a very meditative kind of experience so some people turn to meditation uh, for me it was running so that's something that i've continued even till today um i can spend hours you know outdoors uh, lost in thought and i very often come back uh, with a lot of clarity um as to you know what i want to do next so yeah. absolutely i think uh, again a lot of things a lot of takeaways for our students to find out your way around it find out you know what worked for tanvi was that she found running helped her a lot i'm sure that you'll also realize maybe not now you'll do for time how there's something that always helps you come out of a situation like that thanks a lot for that tanvi uh, at this point i think we are running a little short on time so we're going to allow for one more question anand so sure. uh, we'll allow for one question from the students who have raised their hands um so honestly we need to follow the process of asking questions on pigeon hole we'll allow for one process we have one students who's literally jumping away so you know i mean <laughs> i'm just going to allow her to ask the question my heart won't allow me to move forward otherwise go ahead aveka rathor okay we'll try we'll try yes go ahead aveka aveka you'll have to unmute yourself Yes. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to ask that, um, like, uh, what was your, uh, what was your, your and your parents' struggles, and what was your, uh, like, what were your parents' choices before badminton, and do you like any other sport except for badminton? That's a lot of questions. Right. Let's try and keep it quick. Then we'll be able to entertain a couple of other questions. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. So, uh. I'm not for your struggles. Sure. Uh, so Avika, like I said, there were no real struggles. I enjoyed um everything that I did uh, for my for my sport. Um, I ate, drank, slept badminton, and I absolutely loved the sport to such an extent that I didn't look at anything as a struggle. Uh, for me, so, it was my. What is your favorite sport then? and except for badminton other than badminton uh, i love playing tennis playing and watching tennis rafa nadal is my biggest i'm his biggest fan thanks thanks for that avika and thank you right. we we'll ask we'll allow for two more questions uh, we have some people who have raised their hands two more questions quick answers vrishan thank you so much avika we're going to remove the spotlight from you go ahead vrishan yes Ma'am, so sometimes it's like you are stuck at some profession that you are not at a good position. So, ma'am, what should we do? We should like leave it off, then start something else, or something we are good at. So, I was, I am always confused at it. I've asked many people, but I am still confused. Uh, so if you are, if you've tried, I I wouldn't advise you to. move from one thing to the next uh if you've just given it a try for a couple of months uh there's always a solution to every problem so uh until and unless you've given it the best shot and you've tried multiple times to make it work um you know spoken to the the necessary people in that particular line look for advice ask for advice from the 
people who are you know experts in that field and if things are still not working out then okay you can consider moving to something else but the first step is not um, throwing in the towel and giving up uh, you have to look at a very solution oriented approach that's that's basically how you should approach every problem thank you so much rishin one last question we're going to ask jayata we're going to allow jayata she's has raised a hand for a while so we're going to allow jayata to go ahead and ask a question uh, jayata from aspire for her brilliant ngo doing super work for uh, women empowering them um trying to make more women a part of the active workforce and um uh, hoping to get a lot of women to emulate tanvi and other people like you tanvi go ahead jayata uh thank you so much ananj for that and uh tanvi i am literally blown listening to you over here i think ashi correctly mentioned that you can learn so much from a sports person they are literally life skills that you can uh take away um so my question is not really uh, directed towards sports but i did hear uh, ashi mention in her uh, like in your introduction that you are an economics major uh so i want to know that what led you to pursue economics you know despite having um such a stressful not a stressful but such a hard journey for badminton and if badminton would not have worked out would you be pursuing something in economics and what would that be um actually it was a bit of a uh, like i was left with no choice but to pursue commerce and economics um i had an aptitude for science uh in school and i wanted to probably pursue sports nutrition or sports psychology um something on those lines but uh, by virtue of time co- constraints and commitments to my sport uh, you know going down that route was uh, asking for too much um, in terms of the time commitment so i uh, you know ended up pursuing commerce and uh, economics as a bit of a the only approach <laughs> the only way forward but i i ended up uh, pretty much enjoying it um I, i mean went on to do a masters in sports management which was uh, which is in a you know a growing field with all the leagues all the uh, you know as an athlete you you look at things from an athlete's perspective and you know when you look at the management side of things it's very different you know whether it's looking uh, managing an athlete's life managing his uh, sponsorships managing you know providing the team that uh, helps an athlete achieve what he does on the team effort so i think um from the perspective of giving back to sport that's something that i see myself doing uh whether it's the policy side of things or just managing an ma- managing an athlete um creating a foundation to support athletes uh, financially i think that's what i see myself doing doing ahead. that's amazing thank you so much for that thank you thanks jaisa for that question we did uh, you know want to talk about it that's great we got covered yes anand you were saying something absolutely i think we are good uh, ashi please go ahead do the honors thank you for all these questions our apologies for not being able to answer a bunch of others but uh, i'm we are so glad to see the level of enthusiasm by the end of it pigeon hole has all of 134 questions tanvi so you probably have to call you for an entire day for these students one day <laughs> it's it's wonderful that you know uh, there were so many questions asked honestly uh, the the kind of things that we spoke about today there are so many things that are yet to be discussed but i'm so glad that you were able to you know open these doors for us further you know how a life led uh, with discipline can result in so many positive things uh, you know tanvi at this point i just want to talk to you about how this entire thing started off you know still i rise is uh uh you know something that we are very very passionate about it's uh, it, it is coming we want people to be aspiring for a lot we want people to be skilled with the best uh, of the best and we want people to you know ensure that uh, we want people to keep going out for their dreams and you personify all that you know uh, we're so proud of we you know proud of doing um uh, i can still see a lot of hands at this point but i'm so sorry students we're not going to be able to entertain a few more questions i just want to talk to you that you know uh, we're so glad session from you we've learned about resilience we've learned about you know what a disciplined life can be we've learned how to uh, take setbacks in stride and uh, 
we're so proud of all the things that you've done for us all the things that you continue to do and we can only hope for nothing but success so thank you so much for joining in thank you uh, so much i really loved seeing all like there's so much anthu at the end of this session and um, i'm really feeling good about it uh, thank you to all the thank you ashi thank you anand i think it's been a fun afternoon uh there's just one thought that i want to leave the kids with it's um stay hungry because um you know like i mentioned earlier the fire in your belly is what's uh you don't know where it's going to lead you uh so make sure that you if you have it already great if you um feel that you're lacking i think it's it's time to cultivate that because um whatever you choose to do whatever you choose to follow be it sport or non sport um as long as you have that attitude every morning when you wake up uh, to be a better version of yourself and to go out there and actually achieve something it's it's a very uh, powerful drive um so i i wish all of you the very best and um hopefully we have some more champions uh emerge soon <laughs> absolutely absolutely you know just to summarize a few things we started out students by talking about how it's not uh, as glamorous as it seems there's a lot of hard work there's a lot of process oriented work you have to take each day at a time so i i hope that you remember this that you know while we are aiming for all the big things in life we take it at one step at a time set the goals achieve those and then go on to the next thing uh tanvi also spoke about having a very disciplined uh, lifestyle since a young age she has had to give up on a lot of things she's had to give up on a lot of birthday parties she's had to give up on a lot of you know just uh, fun things she also spoke about how she had to give up on desserts and i think uh, that itself is something but uh, i'm sure that you also have a certain set of challenges but at the end of it you have to answer avika's question avika was asking me about my struggle giving up desserts avika <laughs> i think i think that would be very similar for me too than me you spoke about you know how you've managed time uh, since a young age she spoke about how in school she you know managed time uh, between her exams and her uh, you know passion for sports and beyond this she spoke about having the fire in her belly that is what kept her going and um, nothing seemed like a sacrifice nothing seemed like a struggle for her everything seemed like everything had an objective everything had a reason so it's very important for you all also to understand that there is something that you are very very passionate about and if it requires you to give up on certain things just know that it's for the greater good it's eventually going to lead you to some place amazing some place that you're going to be very very proud of being and some place that you know everyone around you is going to be so happy for you for so that's one thing she also spoke about you know how great little victories so every day when you achieve the smaller goals give yourself a pat on the back know that you're going in the right direction uh, another thing that you you know she she hopped on she spoke about how it's important uh, to even when you fall down to never stop you know striving she spoke about her love for rafael nadal and i'm sure there's so much that we can learn from a sports person as uh, decorated as tanvi So thank you so much, Tanvi, for all that you've taught us today. Uh, at this point, I'd like to just quickly uh, say thank you to Lotus Valley International School. Thank you so much for um, our teachers who've made sure that our students could be a part of this. Uh, a lot of these are actually some of my students who have actually taught uh, in the past too, and I'm sure they've resonated with a lot of things. So also believes in. We believe in a process-oriented approach, and we believe in having. Uh, a very clear goal in mind and always continue to strive for it so amazing that which is aligning with everything that we do and at this point i'd also like to thank aspire for her for doing such amazing work uh since the ensuring that girls around india are able to you know uh empower themselves are are empowered to make decisions for themselves so thank you so much aspire so much elpro uh, for thank you so much lotus valley international school and i know there are a lot of questions a lot of hands that are getting raised but i'm so sorry uh we're going to continue this don't worry we're going to be continuing we're going to be back uh with another episode of still i rise and i hope that you all are going to be a part of this our lovely audience joining us from youtube we're going to be back on the 24th so please do look out for us. a lot of questions that are going to be raised at to that too at that point so thank you so much tanvi once again for joining
play it means a lot to us most right.